Bila 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 Alikuwa mwanasiasa mkuu kule New York. Alikuwa congressman. And he instead of taking after his father, na kuchukua barabara ya baba yake. Na kufanyika na kufanyika mwanasiasa kule Marekani. Aliweka mambo yote chini kwa ajili ya ufalme wa Mungu. Sijui ni mambo gapi mweka chini kwa ajili ya ufalme wake Mungu. Ili tupikie bwana wa mambo haya. Lakini aliweka chini kitu. Urithi ambao baba yake alitaka uchukue. Aliweka chini. Kwa ajili ya Bwana wa mabwana. So ili leo he can be here. to minister to us. Amina. wake him and you don't take it as your own that's very good right there beautiful can you all hear me very well very clear very good 
I love your bishop. He's a good man. Pastor Alfred, Bishop Alfred. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for his life and his ministry. Come on, come on, come on, dude. Come on, come on. You people are tired. You didn't have enough Rugali yet or Chapatis. You need some energy. Come on, give me a little good hand of praise. Do it, do it like you need. You know, you know, you know, God can look at someone and go, ah, no. You don't think he can do that? You don't think he can do that? He can do that. He does that with a lot of people. Whenever I have the thought that uh, I have to really flow in the things of God consistently every day, I don't want to be just like some people that I've seen that get left on the way. Even preachers, even ministries, even churches, even business, some people that want to do something, but they don't have a lot going on. I don't want to be a person that God looks at and goes, oh, hmm. You know, you, you have to elect yourself, and if God has selected you, then you have to elect yourself into the flow and connect with Him. And I want to speak to you about this subject called brilliance. Brilliance is a creative avenue of expression from the mind, from the heart, even from the spirit even from knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, that you begin to, um, my God, I feel the anointing. Ooh, Lord. You listening to me today, something's coming to you, you've never had it, you've never heard it like this. There's a, and there's a wave of the, of the Spirit of the Lord coming behind me to impart something to you. When you see people that are untoward, unorganized, lacking, impoverished, messed up, low level, you know, low level kind of thing. Something got into their mind that was wrong. But you lift your hands up as the people of God and say, God, get the highest order that you have into my own mind. Now, if you've never said that before, or you've not said that very often, you've just begun a new journey. Because when you feel the inclination to go up higher, you'll feel very dissatisfied and frustrated with what's been around that hasn't been okay. And uh, also in the realm of the way things are in the environment, you should also not allow them to stay like that. Hello? Hello? Someone thought, well, that's the way it is and that's how it is. You can drive on the road, you feel like you're driving on the face of the moon. Praise the Lord, you know, the craters and all that. And then if you don't go fast, people look at you like, what's up? Because that, to them, that's their normal. And God looks at it and shakes his head and said, y'all are crazy people. Y'all are crazy people. Lift your hands. I'm serious. See, if you can't take correction and rebuke and like adjustment and molding and adaptation to God's ways, you're, you're living in the realm of foolishness. God doesn't accept everything the way it is. He didn't accept the devil. He doesn't accept rebellious people. Jezebel was eaten by the dogs and only was left was her hands and her feet and her head. And the dogs ate everything else of that evil woman. Because God said, I'm not going to allow it. But he had his prophet Elijah to prophesy that the change would come. And though people didn't understand what was spoken, it happened. <laughs> God was not tolerating the system of Jezebel the way it was. He's not tolerating the system of corrupt politicians in Kenya and saying it's okay, that's normal. He's not accepting the roads the way they are, all messed up, everything a mess. And he says, that's okay. No, it's not okay. Look at your neighbor. If they're not close, just wave at them far away, get a micro microphone and go, hey, it's not okay. Tell somebody, it's not okay. See <laughs> Sal.
If someone's a Jenga, doesn't mean you have to be one. Yes. Praise the Lord. If someone's a Mashenzi, doesn't mean you have to be like that. If someone's broke, losing, oppressed, never has victory in their life, that's not okay. Someone say Sisao. I'm saying it right, I know. Nisao means it's okay. I'm okay. Nico Sao. Praise the Lord. Nico gone. I'm in gone. Yeah? Hello. See, Sal means. Right? I want to speak to you about God's brilliance, but I want to just entitle this brilliance that you can get a hold of it. You look at people and you see how some people go very far in life. You know why? It's because they decided to do it. And it doesn't matter where you are. That's okay. It doesn't matter where you are if you're in Nairobi, Kenya, or New York City, where I'm from, or London, England, or where Hong Kong, or it doesn't matter where you are or where you're from, it matters what you decide to do with your life. How many know God made big promises to us? If you read the Bible, it's almost too much. Can anybody understand that? It's almost like, God, you want to give me all of this? You want to do all this for me? You did it for Abraham, you did it for Job, you did it for David, you did it for Solomon. But I'm in that family line, so you mean it could also happen for me? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. The Lord is tired of seeing people all messed up. How many know he's tired of seeing you being messed up? Now here's the key now. Here's where, here's where the thing changes. Here's where it changes. When you decide to step up and accept the challenge. Amen. Yes. Lift your hands and close your eyes and say, Lord, it's for me. Now I have to tell you something. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you honor, praise, matchless majesty, a sign and ascribe to you. To thee we ascribe glory, honor, power. You know the scripture? Uh, Revelation 5, 11 and 12, he said that uh, he was the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. But then he said to, to receive glory, honor, let me say it in order, power, riches, wisdom, might or strength, and then glory, honor, blessing and power and, and majesty. Lift your hands. These are the attributes of the Lord himself. But you, I want to ask you this question. Are you living like that? Is your house like that? Please don't get mad. If you get mad, get mad at yourself. Let me be like uh, the one holding a mirror to show you reality. When you see something great, like if you see God, all of a sudden, you, you know, we think we see him, but we know him from like the scriptures or from uh, uh, our conception of who he might be. But if you were to enter his atmosphere and environment, you would feel undone. Remember Isaiah? In chapter 6, he said, I'm a man who's undone. I'm messed up. But nevertheless, here am I. If you want to use me, it's okay. I'll accept Remember Ezekiel was in the valley of dry bones <laughs> and he couldn't, uh, couldn't see that these things could live again and come back to life. So when the Lord asked him, can these things live again? He said, Lord, you know. I don't know. You know. Good answer. Honest answer. But I don't know if his faith, if his faith was there enough to believe, but then God sent the wind of his resurrection power and raised the whole army back to life, put them all back together. 
So why is that in the Bible? So that we can see that God's resurrection power can recreate your life. Lift your hand. Nobody, oh, that's revelation. Wow. Nobody ever told you that in your life. You've never heard that before. I don't think I've heard it. I think the Holy Ghost just said it just now. That's powerful. And the Lord wants us to make it practical. You know, to understand that we can, uh, we can have everything we see in the Bible. We can have it. And if you don't think that that's what Christianity is about, then I don't know how it's possible to even, um, if you don't believe that's possible, then I don't know how you think you're serving God. God is not church. God is not a preacher. Let a preacher tell you that. He's telling the truth. He's real. That's humility. That's, you know, being, being like he. The preacher is sent to tell you of the possibilities of what you can have and to help you get there. And if there's no progression toward a greater life, then what is the person even doing for you? Even for the kingdom? Nothing. Not much. But I hear people all the time, they want to build their church. They have a vision. Bishop, you know what I'm talking about. They have a church, they want to make noise, shout, music, dancing, culture stuff, you know, programs, department meetings, you know, trying to get more people to come to the church. For what? For what purpose? In God's mind, the purpose of the church, <laughs> the purpose of the church is for him to manifest himself and train to reign. Train people, raise them up, impart himself, his brilliance to them. My message this afternoon is entitled Brilliance. I want to explain it again. I'm not saying it's God's brilliance because you'll just think, well, that's him, but I'm me. No. You're the one he wants to be brilliant. Remember he said he, he's going to give us the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, I have not seen, ear have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the great things that God has prepared for those who love him. Romans 8.28, all things work together for good, not bad. So we use that, in the church people use that uh, scripture for adversity. Well, you know, God just works to, things together for good and it's so bad, but it's supposed to be good. You're crazy if you talk like that. That's not what the scripture says. He says he causes all things to work together. What does it say, Bishop? For good. Did it say bad? Where is it? So how do people get that? I think the devil, <laughs> I think the devil's a bit clever to come and insert some things in people's uh, quote-unquote doctrinal or philosophical perspectives that mess them up and steal the blessing of God from them. Let me prophesy to you. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Yes. You're not ready, but are you ready? Is somebody ready? Can I hear one person shout? Yes. All, right, all right, okay. God has no business with you being poor untoward, unorganized, unclean, low-level, low -level, you know, living, living in messy, dirty, horribly decorated things. He wants you living in palaces. He wants you living in beautiful, elegant things. God, I don't know if you're ready for, for me today, but I'm here. Praise the Lord. The Lord sent me. So... I know I'm ahead of myself a lot. I'm ahead of the program a lot of times. But this will speak after I've, my trail of dust has gone to another place. To, the, the Lord will come and create this thing here for people. Amen. What I'm speaking here. Like that valley of dry bones. You look around and you say, can this whole society be fixed? God, you know. It's too big for me to even ask for that. <laughs> I don't know if I can believe that it all can be changed because it's 
See, the normal, the way things have been, you need to see that changed to become a new normal. A new normal, which is elegance. Cabo, chef. Spirit of poverty. You better hit the road. And not everybody will catch this. Not everybody, but there are a few that will catch it. And everything in your life needs to skyrocket higher. Changing every day more into his image. If that's not happening, you're not in a happening of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is not tangibly manifested in your personal world or in you if you're not like transforming. Sometimes the next day that I have compared to the day before is completely different in expression, in, in circumstances, in my mind, in what's going on because God is moving. He's ever changing things. But please understand something else. We need to redeem the time because you don't have all day. Adam had all day. The only one that had all day was Adam. Adam had all day. You ever hear the things? I don't have all day. You ever hear that saying? I don't have all day. Hurry up. Adakisha. Adakasana. Hurry up. Yes. The only person that had all day was Adam. Because God said to him, in the day that you eat thereof and disobey my, my, my command, thou shalt surely die. And the day, Peter said, with the Lord is a thousand years, and Adam lived to 935 years old. 935. So in the day that he ate thereof, he died. He couldn't get to a thousand years. Now we can't relate to that because people nowadays can't get to a hundred. Hello. God was so grieved with man at one time that he sent a flood and wiped the whole earth out. Isn't that scary? How would you like to have been one of those people drowning? There's water everywhere, flood everywhere. And you see this ark that this crazy prophet Noah built. And he's only there with eight people and two by two of all the different animals. They closed the door and the water rose and the ark started to move and all the other people were wiped out. And God said, it re I repent of making man because they've so grieved me. Can you imagine? So based on that premise from even the scripture, we're going to now think that everything is okay just the way it is? Anything I do, it's okay? No, you, you can't think that and be correct. So the first step to moving to the next step is receiving an impartation of God's power in his mind, into your mind. Lift your hands right now and ask him, Lord, put your brilliance in me. Fill me with your wisdom. Fill me with your knowledge. Fill me with your understanding. Fill me with the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, counsel, knowledge, understanding, might, and the fear of the Lord, the reverential uh, respect and honor for the Lord and his principles and Lord do it today in me now how different is this right now see I, I enjoy I enjoy the gifting that God's given me I'm amazed by it as hard as it was to get here today I've been on the road for hours but now I feel okay because I got to my assigned place but, it, but getting here was a tremendous battle in a lot of ways. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story. I was down uh, Gong Road, way down there. And, no, no, I think I was over uh, all the way by Westland. Can you imagine I woke up at six in the morning, haven't eaten food in many days. And I only say that not to give any credit to myself. I say that so you can also have the grace to fast. Because I'm gonna pray at the end of this and release that fire on you that God can have you go on a fast even for many days and break all this stuff that's holding you. Just break it, just break it. Break your flesh, break the oppression, 
break things in the spirit realm and get your body organized, you know, flushed out, losing some weight. I lost five kilos already this week. Already, five kilos. I measured myself. I'm organized. I, was, I checked myself. I checked my blood pressure, my blood sugar, and my, uh, my weight. All this morning I did that. And uh, my blood pressure is way down. Woo, thank you, Lord. It's like the low end is in the 60s, 68. I don't remember it ever being like that. And they said normal, like normal, absolute perfection is like 66. I said, I'm 68 on the low end? They said, yeah, that's the bad one too, if that thing goes too high. And the other one was like 130, something like that. That's really good. Can you imagine that? Huh? And I looked at the scale and I thought, man, I've lost five kilos already. And I'm going to keep going. Two months ago, I was on a long fast. I lost about 30 pounds. Now another five and six, and I'm going to keep going. I know I look good, but I'm getting better by the minute. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Right now, while I'm talking about it, receive the grace. Lift your hands right now. The fire of God. Do you know, I have to give God the credit for all of this because he gives the grace to do it. You don't wake up one day and say, I'm not going to eat no food until whenever. Who can do that? You, some people can if they're a crazy intercessor type and they're really praying all the time, like, I got to go on a fast. Or you gear yourself for the month of January to do that 21-day fast with the church, you know? But you're crying all the way through it. No, I don't wait till January. I'll do it in July. i do it in November. I did it back in, September, in August, September. Whenever it comes... The grace comes, the Holy Ghost just comes, and you know in your spirit, you hear God say that you're, you're just going on this thing. First day's a little bit rough, second day's a little bit rough, third day you're good, fourth day you're oh, fifth day you're oh, you know, and you got to keep pushing yourself. The real fast is when you don't eat any food. You just drink liquids. Liquids, 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 liquids. No solid food. You don't chew anything. You don't eat anything. You just drink liquids. And whenever you're having a rough moment, take, get some blended juice or something like that, fruits, and drink it down and let your stomach feel. Take some antacid pills if your stomach starts talking to you. Come on. And push yourself and keep drinking these waters. My God, I love this water. This Karen get water. Some of the best in the world. And just drink five of these, you know? three, four, five of these, and just keep doing it, and you'll have the grace, get through another day, go to sleep, don't eat, wake up, you'll be happy you did. No evidence. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. All of you other heathens in here, no amens. I'm going to give an altar call for salvation, too. I think I will. Some of you sit there looking at me. You're too full of Ugali. Your mind is messed up. You're constipated. You can't even think straight. You're full of flour and ooh, what is that stuff called? Uma? What's that stuff you make the flour? What's it called? Unga, unga. Yeah, you're messed up. You need to take some stuff, flush yourself out, drink a lot of water, go on a long fast. And start eating fruits and vegetables. Cut out all this junk food. Let me tell you, Mandazi is not health food. And all this oil that people put in stuff, that's not health food. Get some light food, light oil. Get an air fryer. You can make samosas really nice. You marinate. I use chicken breast. I don't use beef. Chicken breast minced, you know? And you make the samosas with the spices and the thing, and you marinate the chicken. And you put them in the air fryer. And the air blows. It's like you're frying it, but without oil. And you can eat 10 of those things. Oh, 20 of them. Oh, I've done it. You got a whole pot of samosas. Oh my God! I eat one, I eat another one, I put some sauce on. I'm like, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. I think I went to heaven early. Praise the Lord, I'm in heaven, but I'm going back down to earth. 
and there's no oil in there. You don't feel like, you know? What you put in your body is very important. Eat light. Go on a diet. Go on the fast. Lift your hands. I'm praying. I'm, this is powerful. It'll help you. You'll, you'll thank me later for saying these words to you. You'll thank. You'll be so grateful when you feel the anointing, when you feel you've broken oppression and devils. You've gotten mastery over your flesh. And your insides are getting clean and cleansed. My God, you start to feel energy. You feel like you're a superman, like a superwoman. Superman and Wonder Woman. Yeah, it's real. God didn't make you just to survive. He made you to thrive and to keep going up. Put your hand on your head right now and say, Lord, give me this grace. And Lord, impart your spirit of brilliance, the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, excellence, revelation, enlightenment, illumination. Oh, I love this teaching on learning. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing this. And just give it to me. Let me see things in a new way. Let my eyes come open from today, from this visitation of the Lord here, right in this session, in this conference. Let the power of heaven come upon me to open my eyes to see everything wrong around me. Lord, even if I feel some disgust and some pain and discouragement and uh, huh, it's okay because I know you're bringing change in my life. And you really can't you really can't change anything for the better unless you see it the way it is. In the nasty now and now. You can't go to the sweet by and by. I'm talking about on the earth now, not in, in life. Without seeing the nasty now and now. You could see someone that's so organized, so rich, so excellent, and you feel pain. I know what I'm talking about. You look at them and you feel pain in your emotions. You're like, oh my God. How did they do that? Can I do that too? The answer is yes, if you can discipline yourself and work every day like they did for so many years, you can't catch them. Someone that's far ahead and they've done so much and they've achieved so many things, you can't catch them. So don't try. And don't try to compare yourself with them. Don't look at their blessing and feel jealousy. Jealousy means, the definition means, I hurt at your success. Your brilliance causes me pain. But you can't walk what someone else has. You need to just learn from them. Take it as a mentorship, as a coaching class. And say, now, I need to start organizing my life like that. Let me learn, 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 learn. Here's another key word, big word. L-E-A-R-N. We should find a way to make an acronym out of that. You know? <laughs> L for something, E for something, A for something, R for something, N for something. Learn. You need to be a learner every day. Learning more. Learning things. Reading. Researching. Can I tell you, the internet is not to watch junk. The internet is to learn. Praise the Lord. That's why God made it. Not for foolishness, but for good things. To learn. Here's another example. I'm talking to you like a father now. Here we go. I got rid of all of my television channels. I don't have them anymore in my life. I got rid of all the cable. I don't watch local television. I don't watch programs on TV at all. Zero. The only thing I do is I look online and get things that I'm interested in learning about feeding myself, messages, even worship. You can use it to find good worship, you can find good messages, and you can find a lot of good information about business, about life, about a lot of things. And you selectively feed yourself with brilliant knowledge and understanding of, with, from people that have done it. You know, sometimes you have these awakenings. I was talking about one before. When you feel this feeling like, oh my God, I'm still a man. <laughs> you're a lady, you say, if you're a man, you say, yeah, I'm still a man. A woman says, you're still, you're still a woman. Uh, and you're just like on the earth. 
And the way things go or don't go is really up to you. It's up to me. I have to choose to do the right thing every minute of every hour of every day. I have to keep making the right decisions. And there's only one thing you really need to know all the time is what to do next. Every second of every hour of every day, every minute of every hour of every day, of every month of every quarter of every year, you need to know what to do next. What to do next. What's the best thing I could do now? How many would like to ask God for perfect decision-making ability? Perfect decisions, you'll make them. Perfect decisions. Decisions that propel your life further ahead. Decisions that will help you to prosper. And one of the ways you prosper and get anointed, let me tell you something, this is powerful now, is to connect with people that are anointed. Because God has chosen to anoint certain people. When you connect with them, you can partake of that anointing. The smartest thing you can do is see an anointing and run toward it and pop, pop. Two ways you can receive impartation. Three ways. The lazy way is you could be in a meeting and just say, God, please, and God can touch you with something. But the way you really get the big thing is when you serve it or sow into it. When you support the work of missions and of God on an anointed vessel, now financially you're partaking of the glory of God. And when you serve and connect and sacrifice yourself to serve in an anointing, now God becomes one with your life. You build his kingdom, he's going to build your house. You build his house, he's going to build your house. He's going to give you so much. But a lot of people don't ever get very far because they don't do very much. They live to take. I've tested people. I had a guy, I was going to tell you a funny story, I'll get to it when I can. Uh, not now, in, in a bit. If, 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 if the Lord allows me, I just want to move on here. The Lord uh, spoke to me to call a certain man that used to work for me years ago. And I thought, he's a loyal guy, he has a good attitude. Let me call him again and come see me. So I said, I called him up and said, yo, hey, I'm in town. Come see me. Hmm? Come see me. We'll talk. So sure enough, he's thinking, well, I can help with this. I said, I need a couple of people for this and that and something for this and that. Can you help me with that? Oh, sure. So I got so impressed by that. I thought, well, this is great. But then, after a few minutes, just like what happened before that I had forgotten about, he starts sharing with me all his problems and what he needs, and he's asking me for money. Hello. Kid is locked out of the school. Oh, what am I going to do? Then the rent is overdue. Locked out of the house. What are you going to do? And me, like a, a loving pastor, I helped him out and I thought, well, he's going to work it off, you know, he's going to work off the money. And then after that, I realized there's really nothing else to do because something is wrong in the whole equation of the whole thing. And then I said, let me leave a test. Let me see if this guy will really run after the anointing. If he, if he can bow his head down and if he doesn't have money, even for transport, he'll walk miles and put his head down in the presence of God in the meeting where we are. And then I say, now, I feel the anointing so strong. Like, oh, God. Someone lift your hands up. Power of God's falling here right now. Wow, wow, wow. You can feel it. You can feel it. The atmosphere just changed just now. Just like lightning just went. Like a wind blew across this place. Wow. Lift your hands and receive the impartation. The grace to serve, the grace to sow, the grace to commit, the grace to be disciplined, the grace to fast, the grace to learn, the grace to study, the grace to shut off noise, the grace to change and renew your mind and get to a place. And there's, God is extending his hand. And this is in the story what I'm saying. 
God's extending his hand, but will you come and pay any price and take his hand, take your hand, and say, I'm going to receive of that. The way I'm living right now is not how it's going to be. It, things are going to change. I'm going to connect with the grace. And do you know, I left it as a test to see what this man would do, and, and even other people also. And so many times they fail the test. They don't push themselves. If you think like, with a realm of just taking, 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 and not giving, 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 you got the wrong mentality, God will not bless that. Maybe you'll survive, maybe you'll get enough to live to eat, but already you're too fat. Hello, sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. You need to go on a diet anyway. You could go without some of the food. Praise the Lord. And if you don't have transportation, you can walk somewhere. You can cry when the rain is falling down upon your head. I'm reminded of a man as you're going somewhere. I'm reminded of a man of God in America who has a very huge ministry. He said, a young man came up to him one time and said, I want your anointing. I'm amazed at how God uses you. Can you pray for me? The man of God stood back and says, he says, are you sure you want it, son? Are you sure? Are you sure? The guy says, yes, he's crying, he's lifting his hands. He thinks he's going to get blessed now for free. Hello, for free. For free. Nothing's free, by the way. He thinks he's going to get blessed for free. What cost this man so much? He stretched out his hand, he said, Lord, the time when they shut off my lights and my kids were crying because I didn't have money, but I stayed faithful to the call, give that to him. The guy starts shaking, getting nervous. He says, Lord, the time when I preached in a church and nobody would give me a ride, I went outside and it was raining and I stood at the bus stop and I was sweating from preaching and the rain was coming upon my head and tears were coming down my face. Three realms of water. Water from the sweat, water from the air, from the rain, water from his tears. He's messed up. <laughs> Give it to him. Yeah, Bishop, he said, no, no, I, I got to add one more. And he said, then, the rich lady in the church with a big Cadillac, big, you know, back then, I guess that was a big uh, fancy car. She drove past him really fast. He's standing in the bus stop, and the, 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 the water on the floor, the mud puddle, she ran over it, and it came and splashed it. <sighs> it gets worse, right? <laughs> you thought it was bad with the three. Now that's the fourth. So he's soaked. He's rained on. He's crying. Now he's full of mud. And he stood there crying and took the bus home and went to the next meeting to preach more. Today he's a multi, multi-millionaire, has a church of 30,000 people, preach all over the world, written best-selling books. God's favor has, has been upon him. His name is T.D. Jakes. Yeah, some of you heard of it. And he said, Lord, give that to him. Then he went further and said, well, I can't remember all the stories. And the guy stopped, took his hand, took Bishop Jake's hand off his head and said, Ha! You're cursing, you're cursing at me, you're not blessing at me, you're cursing. What is this? And when Bishop Jake said to him, says, well, son, you said you want my anointing. Here it is. This is what I had to go through. Hello. People don't want to pay any price. They want to do anything that's convenient. When they see money, they steal it. Hello? I have a case right now, general manager of a resort who's my friend who's with me this morning. And uh, I'm amazed I saw the, uh, a lot of the leadership of the government of Kenya this week. I don't want to start naming names, but the big, big, high, high, the highest, okay? This week I've been with them, praying with them, prophesying over them. 
And then he told me, unbeknownst to me, that a relative of the executive uh, contacted them something about some real estate thing, and he ended up sending them my videos. And they've been watching my videos and circulating. I'm talking about the, the executive house, okay? That's been going on. And he told me, told me a story of uh, an accountant who had petty cash of a million, but he stole 800,000. Lift your hands. And now they're coming for him. They've caught him. I said, maybe they'll throw him in jail. You can't do things wrong and get away with it. Praise the Lord, it's quiet. It's, it's quiet in the house now. It's quiet in the church now. Lift your hands and pray so I won't know that you've done something like that. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. You see money, people see money, they steal it. They see Mzungu, they think there's money there. They see like this guy, oh, you have money. I had to pay something that was 200,000 and I sent the guy at an errand to take care of it for me and check to the bank and he probably saw that and went, wow, you know, wow, hey, I'm blessed, you know what I mean? Praise the Lord. I'm blessed for a reason. I have what I have for a reason. You have what you have and don't have for a reason. Lift your hands, but it's going to increase. There's an anointing for increase. I was talking with Dr. Lucy here on the way here. And I said, anybody that connects with me, money starts to flow for them. But they have to connect properly. It's called partnership, connection, friendship. And I can't tell you how many churches I've gone to minister and they just give you nothing. They don't even say thank you. They've broken the principle. Lift your hands, say, Lord, help me to pay any price I need to pay. Say, Lord, help me pay. Pay, see, pay is a good word. I want to challenge you. Lord, help me pay any price I need to pay to get blessed. Any price, everything and anything you would require of me, I'll do it. That's called giving. And I like what Kenneth Copeland says. He says, my giving produces my living. You know, Kenneth Copeland, I told you about T.D. James. Kenneth Copeland has the most prosperous ministry in America, maybe in the world. I think he's 84 years old now, so uh, when he departs, uh, whenever he decides to check out of here, he'll need to, uh, God will have to raise up somebody else to flow in that order. But he said to have received more than $1.5 billion into his ministry from partners. $1.5 billion U.S. dollars. Not 1.5 billion shillings, that's small change. That's only $15 million. Someone lift your hands. You, you don't know that? You don't know about that? And he says, I've sown seed. He told testimonies when he was young, let me go back to the beginning. He said when he was in a meeting with Kenneth Hagin, uh, he, he would, uh, give a pencil or a pen. And he got so mad at his lack, he said, Lord, he said, Lord, I don't know if a button or some coins can help, but I'll take anything I can find and I'll put it there. And you see, some people don't do that. You don't know that the 20 shilling coin you have, hello, you don't know that the 50, the 100, the 1,000 loaf, or whatever you have in the 500, can do something as a seed for yourself. So you think I'm gonna hold on to it. You hold on to it, it's never gonna increase. You need to give it. Someone say giving is the key. Someone say my giving will determine my living. Say God is the source. And if I work things his way, things will happen for me. See, I can feel in the spirit the pressure now. 
I can feel, but I don't care. I want to help you. I've come to help you. Are you getting helped already? Are you enjoying this? Are you learning something? You know, like I think the people preaching uh, can be too shallow. They don't, they've not been anywhere, so they can't take you anywhere. Myself, God is taking me somewhere. I can take you somewhere. Lift your hands. Stretch your hands out told me and connect with His grace. I can take you somewhere. Because I've been somewhere. And I've been with God and He's been with me. So find, your, find also your way to get more into teaching and learning. Hello. And don't think that everything at, in church or in this, what we call the religious experience, has to be emotional and tantalizing. A lot of that's just flesh. A lot of that's ritual. A lot of that is culture. It's a culture club. We don't want the church to be a culture club. We want it to be a kingdom experience. Many people have church. You see, some of you just died off. I nearly killed you when I told you to give. I want to command everyone here today just to get the devil out of the way, you need to give a very big seed. Lift your hands. How many of God talks to you? You'll do something great. You watching online, connect with me. People in Kenya by Ampesa on 0792-320-780. That's the Ampesa number. 0792-320-780. I'll say it one more time. 0792 320-780. There's paypal.me forward sign Thomas Manton. There's the website, thomasmanton.com. You can click on the thing donate now and, and sow a seed. I want to challenge you just to break the devil, just to break him. I had people from other countries used to send Western Union and MoneyGram. That's also okay, although they charge a bit of a fee. But if you have to just go to a shop where there's uh, that thing and just do Thomas Manton, uh, whatever country I'm in, you could ask me by phone, I'll tell you. We had people doing that because they're desperate. They know where they are. It's not where they're supposed to be. And when you want to get something great happening for you, you need to partner with the, the, the thing that God is on. And when you touch that, my Lord, he'll touch you. Someone lift your hand and say, Lord, I got it. I'm getting it. But most people are scrambling around looking to take. Can I give you a new challenge in life? Look at what you can give. And when it hurts, now you know you're really doing it well. When you feel pain, if you give and you don't feel anything, that wasn't a big gift. But if you give and you miss it, you feel like, I've lost something. Oh, now you've planted a real seed. And then watch, you, you, and you can't just do it once and say, well, I'm going to see how it works out. You've got to keep doing it all the time. I know one man of God, he's also a multi-millionaire. He flies everywhere, all over the world, preaching hundreds and hundreds of meetings on private aircraft with his whole team. He's very well-to-do. But he said one year, he had all these beautiful designer ties, you know, suit with the tie, and he had very expensive ties. And he'd see a pastor and uh, feel like, you know, compassion to, because he's under the anointing, take his tie off and put it on the man's neck. And he said one year, he gave away 120 ties. 120, not cheap ties, not those things that look like, you look at it and you go, oh, where'd you get that? <laughs> Amen, my brother. Not those ones you look at and you go, who made that? They didn't do it right. Or you see these guys that wear these ties up to here, and then their belt is pulled all the way up to here, and they walk around like this. You know, you know around here you see that too. You know? Pull your pants all the way up to your chest almost, to your rib cage, and you wear the show tie like this. You need a fashion consultant in your life. Even when I'm casual, I'm elegant, okay? Bright red watch, you see that? With nice, this uh, expensive leather and the Nike suit and my Nike Air Max shoes 
from New York. They're fairly new. I just felt like wearing that today. I don't know. I usually can wear a suit. Amen. And I look okay, right? I look okay, right? I had a tailor make me about 50 or 60 suits. Dr. Lucy, you saw them. Did you see them hanging in the back? Did you see them there? Next to where you were sitting? You see my suits there? And my shoes in the front? I was ready. I had my little gold watch. I had everything. I was all ready, you know. Brand new uh, uh, suede, black suede pattern shoes, very expensive. In fact, I like them so much, I got such a deal on them, it's crazy. I always, God always has me get deals. I don't have to spend a lot of things. I always get things for almost nothing. It happens to me all the time. So I like them so much, I bought two pairs. They're all in the car right there. You see that car right there? They're in there. But I thought, no, let me just do my Nike shelf here and feel comfortable. This is very comfortable. No belt, no tie, no jacket, no tight buttons, no tight belt all the way up to here. No halfway tie. I think I haven't worn a suit and tie in about 10 years. It's really scary. I was just thinking about that. Because I'm always wearing these designer uh, fabrics that we have made, custom made, tailor made, and they're very elegant. They look like a suit, but they're just a two-piece uh, thing. But I had that come into my mind that that's how I wanted to dress. Hello. And my hair, everywhere I go, people, your hair, they look at me, they think I'm from Hollywood. Even the Indians, they say, sir, what flim were you in? I've seen you. You know, they, say, they can't say film, they say flim. You know flim? They go, oh, like this, you know how they do their head? What flim? And the little kids are looking like this from the corner, they're hiding behind the table like they think that an A-list actor has shown up. Or else they think I'm from the WWE, I'm one of the wrestlers, you know? They, I get accused of that all the time, yeah. Praise the Lord, but it just happened. So I tell my friends in America, I went to Africa, I couldn't find a good hairstylist, so it just kind of grew, you know? So I just uh, leave it like that. It's like a trademark, it's like a thing. So, let me tell you a funny story. I was uh, uh, crossing from Westlands, coming this way, and I got to the top of the road there and the light, and some funny lady cop, a lady, she came over and she started kicking my, my, my wheel on the front of the thing, and she went like this, like, put the window down. I put the window down, and I said, yes. Hi, dear. How are you? She says, she goes, you're Jesus. <laughs> I said, no. He's my boy, he's my friend. Uh, he said, no, you're Jesus. She kept looking at me. And then I went, she says, go check out your tire. And I went to the, get the petrol station, the shell station. And we checked all the tires at the time, and they, they were okay, there was no leak. I thought, oh my God, I'm on my way to the conference. And then we had this delay, then the road, you know, the construction coming here, we it took a long time to get here, too long. And I thought, oh, now I don't need this now, I have to change the tire. There was nothing wrong with the tire. I think the lady we just needed some entertainment. It's just God let her to come over and say that. And she looked at me, she says, are you okay? I said, yes, dear, I'm very okay, how about you? She's like, I'm okay. Was, okay, Jesus. And I said, I said, Siku Jaiwa. And she went, ooh, pee away. <laughs> what an amazing thing. So there's something unique about you. Don't just wear a gray suit. Now, now in Kenya, you gotta be careful. I see these two colorful people over here. I like you guys a lot. You're different. I noticed, I noticed you, I noticed you guys. I noticed when you came in, I said, oh yeah, there's some fashion going on over there. You're going to be my friends, I can see that. And everybody else is dressed the same as everybody else. Because you can't wear two nice garments around here, especially if you're going all around, you ruin them. If you have nice shoes and you walk in the mud holes and the puddles and the what, and kicking the rocks and everywhere. Your shoes will be finished. So they have the second-hand places on the side of the road and everybody goes to buy their shoes. And you know those Kenyan lady shoes? I call them the Kenyan lady shoes. You know a Kenyan woman, a real Kenyan woman? 
maybe not such a young woman these days. They're more like, you know, more like this, swag with the tight pants, you know, and then tight dress, you know. But you see a, a, a Kenyan woman from the old school, she'll have those flat shoes. You know those flat heeled shoes? And walk like this. You know what I'm talking about? In Kenya. I'm like, where did you get those shoes? Somebody from another country found the shoes that they didn't want, and they sent them on a cargo ship over here, and then all these people laid them out on the side of the road. Let me tell you something. Get your own money, get your own designer, lift your hands on prophesy, get your own thing, get your own look, get your own design. Don't be afraid of people talk about you because they will. You'll have to get strong skinned, tough skin not to care, and present yourself in excellence. Packaging and presentation, how you present yourself in excellence means the world in the realm of business. Yeah! T.D. Jakes made a style, because he's a bit big, he made a style with his clothes, and I copied that with some of the design that I did, because I like the big, uh, he believes it's very wide here, it's too much. But it's not going to get tight on my knees, I hate those skinny pants. I'm not a skinny jeans preacher. Skinny jeans, the one that looked like the bobcat ripped them off, the cat jumped on them and scratched all the holes in there. Jeans, you know this kind of? I don't wear that stuff. And t-shirts, you know, with the name of the conference on it, and they're all like, ah, that's not me. Get your own design. Present yourself. Be different than other people. This is this is part of brilliance. Brilliance. Someone say out of your mouth, I am brilliant. By the hand of God. By the touch of God. By the impartation of the Holy Ghost, by the grace of Almighty God, I am brilliant. I am smart. I am excellent. I am rich. I am prosperous. I am successful. I'm becoming perfect in the image of the Master because He's working on me. In Jesus' name. Now, go ahead, it's all right. Just take a minute to give God a praise. Please, let God be thank you for that. Wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Let's praise God for that. Let's give him some praise. Just give him a hand clap. Give him a, a wave. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> when you begin to uh, catch the revelation of something new, you begin, it'll, be, it'll have an expression in your life. And just by the words you spoke, you just prophesied to your future. Someone lift your hands. I helped you. I helped you. It's a prophetic grace. Watch. From today, there's an anointing here. There's an anointing falling in this meeting. And you that are watching online or wherever you're seeing this, my God, the power of God is, is going to do something so drastic in you. Your eyes are going to begin to come open. You're going to begin to feel pain, distress, and disgust, and disgust. Even a little bit of discouragement, but don't let it discourage you. Let the disc go and let the courage come. Discourage. Get any courage, not discourage. You, know, you have to forcefully do that. But you'll feel like, oh, miserable for a moment. Because you see how things really are. And then you say, you know what? I need to wake up earlier. I need to get busy doing more. And this is where fasting comes in. Fasting will break your tired spirit, your tiredness. You know the thing where you feel sluggish and you feel stuck and you feel stagnant? This is one of the biggest prayer requests I get from this, uh, this country, blessed Kenyan people. Stagnation, stuck, stuck. So God had me do a message called, How to Get Unstuck. Keys to living an unstuck life. Because God's will for you is to have riches and wealth, healing and health, success and abundance and increase 
and prosperity, elegance, opulence, all the beauty of the earth in your house, on your skin, in your mind, in your accounts. Hello, come on now, come on now. In your experience, in your destiny, plan, your purpose, your life, filled with pleasures and treasures from the Almighty God. Because God's not just a, he's not just a God of, you know, he's God, he's a pleasure maker. God is a pleasure maker. That's a really, really radical statement. Write that down. God is a pleasure maker. Now let me give you scripture. Job 36, 11 says, if you serve the Almighty with gladness, you know, you serve him fully, give yourself to him, then he'll cause your life to be filled with pleasure and your days in prosperity. Amen. Somebody thinks pleasure is bad. Who taught you that? Pleasure is good. Everything good about God brings pleasure. My Facebook page, you know, I've been doing this for the last few months and I don't know why. Maybe I'll get tired of it one day. Maybe I'll never get tired of it. Uh, my ministry page, I just put out messages. Uh, my personal page, facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton. Just my name. The ministry page is Dr. Dr. Thomas Manton. And we'll end up making a page just for the ministry itself. The ministry name, we're going to do that. But uh, the ministry page is just the messages. Dr. Thomas Manton, not so many people are there. But I have about 5,000 people on there. Not so many. And on the, on the personal page, we have about 15,000 people, something like that. That's not a lot, but it's a few. That it's growing. And they got, I'll see pictures of beautiful birds, beautiful creation. I'll be driving down the road here to see the flowers that he made, all the different colors and take photos. Very unusual. Most people don't look at those things. But God made all those things for him by, by his own mind to put beauty on the earth so that we can enjoy it. If you think pleasure is not good, somebody preached a sin consciousness into you, and you need to preach it out of yourself. Lift your hands. I'll help you. I'll help you. I can't do it all in one session, but connect with us online. Connect with us in the, in the flow of what we're doing every week. We have new messages coming on, and I'm really mentoring a lot of people internationally, and they're writing me saying how great the message, how much they're getting blessed, how much they're learning. One lady who's in business here in Nairobi said, every time I turn on your thing and watch your video, I, I, I change. I thank God for the gift, of, the gift and the grace and the brilliance. The brilliance, yeah, that's what they, is, that's coming through you to us. Someone preached a sin consciousness into you. You're not supposed to be conscious of sin because then that's what you think about. Everything's wrong, everything's bad. Guess what? If you think like that too much, what's the dominant thought of your mind? also attract something to it. So you'll end up being in the ditch yourself. No, we need to think about righteousness. Come on. We need to be thinking about the glory of God, the beauty of God, the riches, the wealth, the gold, the silver, the treasure, the animals, the land, the flowers, the trees, the property, the fabrics. Come on. The offices, the buildings, the real estate. The health, the equipment, the human resources that do so many things. Lift your hand. Let's take a pause. Say, Lord, I receive it. Uh, some of you are not getting it. It's okay, though. Some will get it. I pray everybody gets it, but I know there's levels to the upswing. I heard a dear man of God say the other day, I was in a conference with him, and he, he said, if you're not seeing results, and you promise people something, and it doesn't happen, you're a criminal. I like that kind of preaching. He said, it's criminal, it's wrong, it's unethical, it's even criminal to stand and promise somebody something, and yet it can't happen for them. But you need the end. Here's, here's what makes a difference. Here's what makes a difference, the anointing. 
You can preach without the anointing, you'll really be spinning your wheels and not getting far. But if God shows up, like he's breathing out this creative message right now. Let's lift our hands and pray. I, I don't have time to share everything of this. I'm gonna just, I'm just giving you a part of it. And I'll continue in this, I believe, that on the subject of brilliance. But I need to write a book on that. Just the title, Brilliance, in big letters. And just let people wonder what it's about so they'll get the book and read it. And I, I really wanted to go into some of my books. I have a book, The Laws of Success, the Benefits of Excellence, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living is another one. And I'm almost sold out. I'm sold out of many of these, but I do have a few copies of the Laws of Success with me today that I found that were hidden somewhere. I think I thought we sold them all, but I found a box with a few there. So you'll be able to get a copy of this if you'd like to see us at the end. Uh, anyway, I don't want to say the, the amount of the seed, but if you're going to sow a certain seed, you can get that. And here's a book just for Kenya called Healing the Soul of the Society. 250 Prophecies for the Nation. And I didn't realize it, but this book turned out to be 250 pages. It matched exactly. Who could have planned that book, God? 250, this is from a prophetic utterance that I delivered. And I recorded it. I was sitting in my car. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and I prophesied for about an hour, hour and a half, and it took about a year to get this into this book. Painstaking editing that I did all of my, all myself. And it became 250 prophecies and the book the pages is 250 pages. I was like, wow, look at that. This is a masterpiece, we're sold out, we're going to reprint on this. But every person in Kenya who, who cares about the nation of Kenya needs a copy of this book. Okay, good. I thought I'd go through a few, but I can't. Uh, the Lord has spoken this creative word. Lift your hands and start to pray in the Holy Ghost. Say, brilliance, 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 brilliance. I'm brilliant. Another thing I want to tell you, when you say, I am, in front of anything, it becomes manifest. He said, it's even my name. I am that I am. Moses said, God, who should I say sent me? You've chosen me. Now, who do I? He says, I am that I am. In other words, what I speak will manifest itself. I say I am, that thing that I say I am to will happen. If you say you're broke, you're troubled, you're impoverished, you're sick, you're wounded, you're needy, you have all these problems, you're putting the power of I am in front of that word and you're empowering it to manifest adversity in your life. And you don't need to do that. So you need to say I'm rich. He even said let the poor say I am. And the weak say I am. And the sick say I am. Healed and healthy. The poor say I am rich. The weak say, I am strong. I am, I am strong. Now you've spoken something out of your mouth that's straight for you to come to you. And you say, riches and wealth, say, riches and wealth. Say, riches and wealth. How do you say, say what? Is that how you say? Say, riches and wealth. Healing and health. How do you say listen? I can't remember. How do you say listen in Swahili? How do you say listen? The word listen. Like listen to me. Skia. Yeah. Sama. You. Uko. Say it. I am. Rich. I am. Healthy. I am. Wealthy. I am successful. I am the head and not the tail. I am above all the and not I am brilliant by the mind of Christ, by the mind of God. Let's lift our hands and pray right now as I come before a landing. Father, I thank you for the grace that people will stop letting others limit them, 
something that happens through fasting also, you get confident. Boldness rises in you. You lose fear of man. You don't care. You don't have to care what anybody thinks. You're just you and you're all powerful, all knowing, all seeing because of the grace of God. All of this that I'm talking about, 100% comes from God. Not from men, not from devils. Not from society, not from culture, not from family, not from ritual, from the nature of God. Wow, the presence of the Lord is moving in. Receive the impartation right now to fast, to pray, and not just to come to a meeting to have a prayer meeting. You know, Keisha, Keisha, Keisha. I used to call it Keisha. The Keisha is tomorrow. But I said, no, it's Keisha. But it's because we go to it tomorrow. I call it the Keisha Keisha. Hey, praise the Lord. You don't need to just come to a prayer meeting to pray and pray about all kinds of things. No, you need to dive into the mission and the calling that God's given you. You need to build your house. You need to build your work. You need to build your ministry if you're in ministry. You need to build your business. Paul said, find your own business. And the most successful people, some of the names I mentioned, they only do their own events. They don't speak out much. They do their own events. Some of the churches that are here that are big and successful that you would consider big, they do their own stuff, their own events. They have their own church, their own people, their own ministry, and they focus so much on that. But I think they've, I think they've figured something out. And, and listen, whether you're a fan of any particular preacher or not, any particular businessman or not, any particular politician or not, you can learn something by, by studying the way they operate. Now, I'm not talking about con artists and thieves and liars, not those. Not the fake ones, not the wrong people, but the people that have built something that it speaks beyond themselves. You look at them, but you also see the organization. Hello? And just repent also. Let God take you to repentance, to apologize to Jehovah for any negative word you've ever spoken against anybody. God will take you to that place and you say, Lord, I thought I knew better, but I look and see other people that I can learn from. Please forgive me. Come on now, come on now, lift your hands. Please forgive me for thinking bad of them. Please forgive me for being bitter or, or jealous or competitive. Please forgive me for ever saying a negative thing, especially against someone in the church and the kingdom. Why? We don't need to do that. You, you don't have to be in their fan club. You don't have to be the partner of them. But you can look at the success of what they they built something and say, Lord, if they did it by working your principles, I can also do it. And you'll feel great about that because now the entrance of the light of that revelation can come to you because you cleared the sin of blocking it from yourself by speaking against it. You can never learn from anybody you resent. You can't receive blessing and honor and favor from anybody that you dislike. So just own up and adapt yourself. A lot of the uh, things in the kingdom and to, to walk with God is adaptation. You have to adapt yourself to his ways and his thoughts, which are higher than our ways and our thoughts. Lift your hands out wide and just say, Lord, I receive this brilliance from you. I receive this touch of the Holy Spirit to make my mind like lightning quick, to make creativity from you come into my mind and heart, to give me courage and fearlessness, to give me boldness and confidence in ways I've never had before greater than anything I've ever experienced before. And Lord, help me build. Say it, Lord, help me build what it is you want built on the earth in my life. Help me build the mission that you ordained. God, I feel this presence. I 
feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Let, let God meet you at the place of an appearance of himself to you, that you stop conforming to everything else and you start to listen to him and let him paint your mind like a canvas. Paint the beautiful painting in your imagination and the imagery of your sight and your thinking and the depths of your heart to build what he wants built. Because at the end of the day, not the thousand years that Adam had, but the hundred years within the century, because you know, some of us, we don't, we don't care to go beyond a hundred. Some of you might want to live more than a hundred. Hats off to you, I don't know. I don't think I want to. I, I don't want to be walking to the pulpit like this, you know? Uh, uh, help me, let me get a chair, you know? If God wants to keep me around that long, it's okay. But so within the century that you have, or less, <laughs> hopefully not too much less. And what's with all these deaths in Kenya? Every day or every weekend is a burial somewhere. Somebody needs to cancel death. Come on, cancel it, cancel it. At least it's not going to happen to you. Come on, say, at least it's not going to happen to me. You're not going to die before your time. Let me prophesy with long life, Psalm 91, 16. I'll, I'll, I'll satisfy you with long life and show you my salvation. Because why? There's, there's a condition. There's a condition. Because your mind is stayed on me. Because your mind is connected with me. Long life will be your portion. People die experience calamity, curses and failures, poverty, being stricken with adversity because their mind is not connected with the Lord and His will and His plan. Are you seeing that? So that wasn't just a promise <laughs> to everybody as an automatic thing. <laughs> also Philippians 4.19 Paul said, my God, you blessed me, now I'm going to bless you. It wasn't automatic, it's because they sowed into his vision, they sowed into the ministry. They connected, he said, you Philippians did more than anybody else, therefore I need to speak this prophetic apostolic blessing over you. But it's not for everybody. That is not, Philippians 4.19 is not a Christian claiming my bills being paid verse. It's not, it's for partners. It's for partners. I, I was visiting with a, a general manager of a, a great resort uh, on the coast, on the ocean. And they brought me there to stay there. They were very kind to me. And when I left, listen to what happened. Big real estate deals started to just appear to him and come. And then he connected with the executive uh, of, the, of, the, of the country. And the family connection came again. And then his boss, the manager of the whole property thing, was mad at him because they're mad at themselves because they, the economy's down. Praise the Lord. You know, on the coast of Kenya, the economy is down. Tourism is down almost to nothing. People will see people at Christmas holiday next month going there and go, oh, it's good. It's not good because the whole year before was famine. So if they get a little bit of making it up at the end of the year, that doesn't mean it's good. It's been very bad. I saw the abandoned properties. I saw them with my eyes. I walked on the road with camels. Families of camels came to greet me. You know, that means something. Five camels came to say hi to me the other day. Five. I have the video, I have the pictures I can show you. Five, it means something. Camels were the treasure carriers. So I, I stopped to take a picture of a beautiful tree with red flowers. And I got out of the car because I couldn't get it out the window at the right angle. Stepped out of the car, it was all gone, it was all gone. Took the picture, the driver's probably thinking, this guy. What is it about the trees? He likes the trees so much. I love the birds. I love the creation. I love all the colors. You have, 
You know, you drive by the road, you see yellow and orange and purple and red, pink, uh, hibiscus flowers and all that. Lift your hands. That's, that, those are not everywhere, by the way. Those are not everywhere, but they're here. Lift your hands and celebrate God for your beauty. You can walk somewhere and see a lion walk past you. You can walk in my Masha and out in the road with the big trees and the monkeys are running over the top. And two giraffes will come and walk in front of your path. And then I was driving, there's a big rhino on the side of the road. Right off, it's huge. Sitting right there. I could reach that. I hand out the window of the car and touch his back. And then I went to the, the uh, baby elephant place the other day, a few days back. And I was putting my hand on the top of a baby elephant. I never did that in my life. I've seen them from afar at the zoo. I've seen them in video. I've seen them in a, in a picture. But I've never been like this. And something amazing happened. There's like about 100, 200 people all around, you know. A lot of wise food moves, you know them. And Kenyans and Chinese and Asians and people from everywhere went to see the elephants. And they brought out these parades of different ages, the little ones and the medium ones and the older uh, teenager ones that were orphans, elephants, and they're nurturing them back to health to put them back in the wild so they can live. And something amazing happened, Dr. Lucy, something, something happened. Uh, this baby elephant, the cutest little one, the cutest of them all, came running over to the fence. And I wasn't looking. I was looking the other way. But all of a sudden, I, I heard something and I felt something. And everybody went, ah. And he ran right up to me and looked at me. Didn't do that to anybody else. And then he was trying to charge the post and he put his long trunk through the post and started to wave it at me to touch me. And everybody's watching like, who is this guy? They don't know me, they don't know, they don't know, we don't know each other, we're all strange, they're all looking like, huh, is he special? Yeah. By the hand of God. So I said, hey baby. I started rubbing his head and I didn't realize that their, their hairs are very spiky, you know? They look soft, but the skin is very hard from the blood, and I was just hitting like this. And he was just like this, playing with me. Didn't do that with, didn't do that with anyone else. So I'm standing outside taking a picture of this, uh, boy, my friend in Malindi told me what the name of the tree is, and I can't remember now. They'll tell me again. It's a big tree with long leaves and these beautiful red flowers. Wow, I was like, look at that. Stop the car. I get out of the car, I'm taking a picture. I got the shot that I wanted. I took about three photos from a different angle. And all of a sudden I hear this, all of a sudden I hear this noise. <laughs> <laughs> Behind me, I was like. And there's a huge camel standing right behind me. And he walked right up to me. And the other ones came, they walked right up to me. In fact, one of them kept walking, so I thought, hey man, they got long, their legs are long, they look strong. Like if they wanted to kick you, I think you'd have a problem. So I was like, okay. And then he got, like he was coming, like he wasn't gonna stop. So I just went like that, you know, out of the way a little bit. And there was a beautiful little baby camel sitting there, and he's just staring at me with his arms full. God, this is too much. This means something. But in the midst of that beauty, listen, there was all this downturn of economy and poverty. Empty properties, abandoned properties, resorts that were beautiful and filled with, at one time with tourists. And today there's nobody there. Why? All the witchcraft, all the works of the devil, all the works of the flesh, all those all night parties they had, all the lasciviousness and adultery and drunkenness, all the witchcraft, all the stuff, it's brought curses upon the land. So what God made was great, but what people did with it, desecrated it. Lift your hands and let's pray.
You have to step out of that into God, into his anointing, into his presence, into his brilliance, and say, now this is my life right here. And God can change my life. How many preachers do we have here? How many preachers? Bless you. How many business people do we have here? You're in some kind of business. Bless you. Create this enterprise where you and God lock into the thing and begin to build what he wants built. And if you don't readily see immediately the curses being broken off of everybody's life, at least you'll see them broken off your own life and the devil will be cast out of your house. I'm reminded of the man that I told you was receiving a test and he didn't come crawling back to receive, he'll stay where he is. He'll stay where he is. But God was reaching his hand out. Favor and access is, is valuable. You don't need to belittle favor and access. If you have favor with someone, work to keep it because that'll produce prosperity for you. Write this down, 95% of all your blessings come from favor. Somebody liked you. Our bishop here, he's a very likable man, he's a very lovely man. You can see him when you're feeling bad and irritated, he just smile, gives you the smile, and you're like, oh, I think everything's all right. Am I right? Hit this guy, my friend here, Bishop Alfred. If he stands there and looks at you, and you're just like, oh, you forget about all your problems. He's likable. He's attractive. Amen. I hope his wife thinks so. I think she does. All right, that's, I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. That's a joke. I'm sure she does. But spiritually to everybody else, you know what I mean? It's favor. Favor. Don't a little favor. Somebody will love you. When other people overlook you and reject you, don't care about you, Somebody will love you. Somebody's crazy about you. Somebody's in love with you. Come on now. Someone loves the way you look, the way you talk, what you say, the anointing, the kind of gift you have. There are people. Your job now is to find them. Find them and let them find you by God's direction and build something brilliant. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Smith at the floor. I, I have a lot more, but I want to just uh, let it ride right there. I love it. Stretch your hands out this way. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, thank you for the touch of your wisdom, the touch of your prayers, the touch of your knowledge, the touch of the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of enlightenment, the spirit of a, a great imagination, envisioning great things, the brilliance of the mind of God and the mind of Christ to appreciate all that you've done, to thank you for everything, but then after that, to take everything further and build something that will have a lifespan of its own. It'll speak to generations. It'll speak to the earth. It'll make the world a better place to live because we were here. Because God's hand was upon us. Receive that challenge. Lay your hands on yourself one more time and say, I am Brilliant in Jesus' name. All right, I'm Thomas Matthew the fourth. I gotta go. And love you much. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise, everybody. I've been debating if I should say this or not, but in in Kenya, live and in person, I have just a few copies of this book, The Laws of Success. If you have a thousand shillings, I'll, I'll hand sign a copy for you. And I guarantee you, once you'll get in this little book, the Revelation will catapult you far. One of our uh, employees some time ago, their mother got this book. I didn't know about it. They read it. And they said, after reading this book by Thomas Mann, I read this book a lot of success. I put it down and I began to cry. And I began to cry. And I couldn't stop crying. And they said, Lord, I'm not supposed to live in this village in a small place and decided that they're going to go into the city and get a house. The Lord prospered them and they've done it and they've moved. And they've moved up the whole chain to another level in life because of reading 
the God-breathed principles in this book. So um, if you'd like a signed copy, I'll get it to you. We're also going to go to reprint. You know, sometimes I think I don't know if I want to, I'm wrestling with this to do it. But people out there need this. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to serve you the laws of God. I'm here to teach you the principles of God. And another thing, you need to work the biblical economic system. You need to work it, tithing, giving, sowing, first fruits, helping the poor, giving, giving, giving. Ephesians 6, 8 said, whatever good thing you do for another, the same the Lord will do for you. They may not help you back, but God will help you back. Jesus said, give. The promise wasn't for everybody, it's only to the giver. Jesus said, give, Luke 6, 38. He didn't say, hope for the other harvest. He said, no, give. And then all these other things will be added to you. Huh? Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and then all these other things will be added to you. So you have some homework to do. Live to give, live to seek God, live to get touched by heaven, and, and your life will begin to change, even from today. Let's stand on our feet. Just begin to pray in the spirit just for a minute again. Just begin to pray. Kaba, Choko, Tisa, Echa, Ela, Ata, O, O, Goa. I'm speaking in different tongues. Ooh, Kemo, Ashiko, Ota, Ati. This is not a tongue language I've ever spoken before this week. I think the fast is just bringing up this, the Holy Ghost. Is in. Eto, Shika, Ata, Ama, Puse, Ete, Elishiko, Ta, Bad, Blaze, Ta, Ban, Shiro, Baba, and Ekiso, Lamache, Kayu. Wushi kala ha yeko Mamba de basu chiku tu Father the mysteries of the kingdom The mysteries of your mind and your brilliance Coming to mankind Coming into the hearts of your people To even break loose Things for themselves first And then for their house And then for their tribes And then for their environments And then for cities and even nations and continents Thank you Lord that you're going to raise up New vessels in this day Many of the old vessels, they're dried up, they're corrupted, they're old brain skins, they, the, the glory has leaked out, they're Ichabod, some of them. Some of them the Lord has walked away, they're, 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 they had something before, but they're just, they're not, they don't have it now, they can't help anybody, but the Lord is going to anoint new vessels, new people, new ministries, new entrepreneurs, new business people, new things are going to get to happen, and it's going to be armed. It's going to be beyond what we can even ask or think. The Lord said, eye is not seen, ears not heard. You haven't figured it out yet. You haven't seen it yet. How great the thing is that I'm going to give you. Lift your hands and receive that right now as we're praying in the spirit. Praise the Lord. I'm so honored to be God's oracle and messenger to teach. I feel a great flow here. I know you feel it. It's something unique that's happened in this session. Something different something very heavenly, and I'm telling you, every word that I've spoken of the positive realms of things is coming into you. It's coming into you, it's coming into you. And from today, God begins a new season. Thank you, partners and friends, for connecting with us. Write to us, send us a message, tell us uh, you know, things you're praying about, I'm gonna pray you through them. And these kind of miracles that are happening for people that connect, are going to begin to happen for all of you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, I love you so much. Let's blow the Lord a kiss. Love you all. Woo! Thank you. I felt that. I need that. Let's give the Lord some praise, everybody. <laughs> Come on, people. Again, exercise class. Again, one more time. Come on. <laughs> lift it, lift it, lift it. Break it. Break the timidity. Break the quietness. Break out of it. Get wild. Get bold. Get loose. Hallelujah. All right, Dr. Lucy, would you come? Love you very much. Our information is on the website, thomasmanton.com. 
and uh, you can uh, you can uh, connect with us there. And again, our friends in Kenya, let me give you the number again, WhatsApp, or he also works for M-Pesa, 0792-320-780. I'll look for your message. And uh, I love you so much. Thank you, Lord. We're having a service in the city tomorrow. If you'd like information on that, private inbox me or send a WhatsApp, where you can meet us in Nairobi City on Sunday afternoon. And uh, I'll be glad to see you there and pray for you and talk to you face to face. Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand for this great church here in Gong Town. The Lord's going to expand Gong. Let me give you a reference. I didn't get to say, say anything about it in the message here. In fact, it's just God had me in a different thing. But uh, Gong is going to be expanded. Amen. Gong is going to become a little business town. Amen. It's the road that they're doing the roads. I heard after I prophesied when I was here. The, the deputy president came and they started some new developments, some new things, some new committees, some being formed. Lift your hands. This place is going to become a real great, the whole country is being developed, but Gong is a very key and strategic town, so you're in the right place. Stand for it, declare it, prophesy it. Claim that you also will be able to own real estate. I said this last time, that you'll be able to get real estate while it's still cheap enough before the, the boom happens, because then after that, all the prices go up. So figure out a way to get some land now, get yourself situated now, and later, as things skyrocket, you can sell and make a profit, or you have something valuable. But the opportunity is here before the boom, but I want to prophesy. You know, God's just been a prophesy. Nation and nations of the world, and this nation of Kenya, there's a boom coming to Gong. There's a boom coming to this area. Uh, I, I mean, I'm like a, in a good way, a development of new things. And it's going to be beyond uh, even what you pre thought of, what you thought of before. Someone say, I am brilliant. In Jesus' name. I love you, and I'll see you in the next, uh, see you next time. Love you.